Starting again, Will Smith understands if people aren't ready to see new film at the Oscars, Slap absolutely respect that. Which he's saying he know ain't nobody going to go see it, so he understand. <laughs> That's what really, I think he's, you know, He's preparing know, to have a flop at the flop box of office. And be like, oh, it's because, you know, of the slap. It ain't because of the slap, it's because we don't want to see the shit. Yeah, he said uh, he would completely understand if movie watchers are not ready to see his film, Emancipation, after he slapped comedian Chris Rock on stage at the Oscars earlier this year. And I brought up last time, Neil Long, you see here in the corner, Neil Long on Will Smith Oscar slap. That was hard for me. And I said, why do these celebrities, particularly the black ones, act like this slap was such a trauma situation for them? Mm -hmm. They need therapy because he <laughs> slapped somebody in front of them. I don't understand why they're acting like this is so outrageous. And I said she should be focused on the headlines with her husband being caught in a scandal with one of the staff and members. I said she didn't come out and say shit about that that's until now. That's her private life. And I said, this is it, it ain't private no more when it becomes social media. It's everybody's business. It's public now. No, 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 no. Private would be the relationship. What Will Smith did was not private. It was public. She can speak on that. She can speak on it. And we can speak on her husband out no, here. No, you shouldn't have nothing her to say about that. That's here. private business. Mind your business. I'm laying up with staff members. Mind your business, man. Leaving no, you mind your <laughs> Uh Travis said you're trying to be a professional. So... We don't know what that means. We'll see. <laughs> we don't know what that means. <laughs> what, that, what does that mean for you? I don't know what professionalism means. I don't know. No, I when I said I'm trying to be professional, I mean, I don't want to come in cussing. What's, what's so unprofessional about... Well, because you mean we, by, we, you have, mean vulgar we have a language particular or, order that we come in doing the show. Do you mean vulgar language or what? So I wanted to continue the tradition of how we come in the show. I didn't want to come in just oh, blazing with, guns. Come in with peace and love. And, and then go in. That's how you do it. <laughs> All right, let's move on to some more stuff about this. The producer of the movie Emancipation, Joey McFarlane, he uh, brought the original uh, scores back photo from 1863 to the film's premiere. I wanted a piece of Peter to be here tonight. So apparently the movie is about a former slave named Peter. But I want to show this. I didn't show this to Travis yet. I want to show y'all to react to he this. He looked like uh, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> They're all the same pretty much, though, ain't they? A, who's the tether? Him or Ryan? <laughs> what you mean, who the, wow. who the real Ryan Gosling? Because they look just alike. All right, let me just show this little clip. Tell me how you came to own the photo and why it was important for you to once you did. Um, oh. I, I have the photo. This is the original photograph from 1863. And I wanted it to be here tonight. I wanted a piece of Peter to be here tonight. Sadly, sa it's sadly to say so many artifacts and photographs have not been preserved or curated or respected. And I took it upon myself to curate and build a collection for future generations. <laughs> You know, my collect, I've been collecting for, you know, a very long time. My collection will be donated at the end of my life for educational purposes. And it's something I just want to give back. But for me, my love of history, my love of truth, my love of larger than life individuals that had an impact on not just some people's lives, but the world, it's worth fighting for. It's worth preserving. It's worth seeking out and protecting. And that's what I sought to do. And the story that came out of that, it, it transcends entertainment, it transcends cinema. It is a lesson, it is a conversation that is needed to be, it, it needs to, to start and continue and keep growing and evolving. And we just need to come together and we need to reckon with the past so future generations don't make the same mistake. Okay. Bullshit, so bullshit, once bullshit. again, we have a Caucasian telling the story <laughs> Of so-called black people. And you say we should go see it. I, I, when I say we're supposed to go see it. Anyway, let me get to the point I'm about to make. What is up with these people wanting to own you in any way? Of, remember I asked the question. We was having a conversation a couple of days ago. When I, and I asked Travis, what does alive mean in the modern day? Well, we saw uh, the Biggie. No, that was, on, that was on stream, wasn't it? When we talked oh, about no, Biggie no. supposed to be having a, um, a concert. That was on. That was live. Okay. Biggie's supposed to be having a concert in the metaverse. 
Mm-hmm. And I said, well, what is alive? Because if he's already gone, but they could still host a concert with his name, his likeness, his music, everything, his whole essence, is he still alive? He's not alive, but his um, his music. But it's not just his, his music. Still lives on. It's not just his music. If he's on stage. That's his image. That's not him. He's not in the flesh. It's just a holograph. It's an image. It's okay. not him. All right. Point I'm making is they went from owning you in the physical to owning you your likeness. Why would you want to own a picture of a man who was whipped and beaten in a former slave? These people love owning. They, they treat the, the trauma and the pain of black people like entertainment. They they want to own trinkets of your of your the stuff you went to. Remember they had a uh, I can't remember what the video was. They showed a couch or a chair or something that was made out of black people's hair. Remember that? There was a lazy boy chair. It was it wasn't called a lazy boy, but it was like a lazy boy, a one seater, and it was stuffed with the hair of black people as the cushion. And people wanted to buy it and have it refurbished. Like, why would you want to own that? They sick. They sick individuals. They sick what? people. It's their what? It's, it's their, their nature. nature. Exactly. Why do you want to own the picture of a former slave? What about that to you? And it's, these are the liberal whites. What about that to you is empowering them and keeping the story alive, owning their artifacts? I don't artifacts. know. Let's ask one. Anyone, any, <laughs> any white Caucasians in the chat that's... <laughs> Live that's listening. You want to answer the question, defend yourself. And this is, and it's compared to this story right here with this woman here, because she's trying to get ownership of her um her ancestor Renty, which is owned by Harvard. A picture of him. Now this dude, a producer of a movie, has the original picture of a slave, and it's like, well, is his family being compensated for this movie because it's about him, and are you going to give those artifacts to them? But he yeah. said he's going to donate it at the end of his life. So I'm going to enjoy it while I'm alive. And then I'll get rid of it when I'm about to die. When I die, you can have it. That's the question that these black actors should be taking before they take these roles. They should ask these questions. Like, Will Smith don't think that way. <laughs> he don't look at that and say, why would you bring the picture of a slave to the carpet of a movie premiere? Like, what the hell? That's kinky to him. <laughs> What what you interpret what you interpreting right there? Go ahead and say what you want to say. I'm not Stand saying on. anything. Huh? I don't have anything now, to you're say. Now you're saying something. But she's trying to get ownership of her ancestors' photo. And here it is, you got this Caucasian movie producer on the carpet with somebody's photo, like, yeah, this is the original. Proud, smiling, acting like he's doing something good by the writing a movie or someone's trying. Should have ran up and took it. I should have ran up and took it. How about why well, run up? Just walk up and say No, run up. Or run up, get. Down. Run I don't up. know. He might, he might catch them. <laughs> oh, he gonna catch her, but she gonna catch him back. <laughs> uh, oh, you talking about the black woman that was behind him taking pictures? Yeah, getting she her bob, like, getting her bob together. Put him in, hit him in the back of the head. And her classic nineteen something dress. You know, she felt like she was. You know, look at this. Belgian auction house cancels auction of African skulls after public public outcry. Well, we know the Belgians what they did. Go ask. Uh, Who's the public outcry? In at the, ask the Congo. What are you about to say? The Africans were doing a public outcry, or what do you mean the Africans? What do you mean the Africans? The Africans on the continent. It might have been people across the world. Okay. Support. An auction house in Belgium was forced to cancel the sale of three skulls of Africans killed in the colonial period in what is now the modern Democratic Republic of Congo. The skulls, which belonged to people killed between January 8, 1893 and May 1894, were put up for sale by, and I'm try to say that name, Auction House in Brussels. Once again, why do you want to sell dead people's skulls? <laughs> it's their nature. A human rights group called Collect um, Material Collegiate, L, I'm going to say that, whatever, whatever has called for the rally in Brussels to condemn the sale of the skulls and for the human skulls to be seized by the government and conserved in an appropriate way with dignity. Just like in um in New Jersey, that bombing. Remember the name of that group? The bombing in New Jersey. The, 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 where the, the, gun, the city dropped a bomb on citizens. I thought that was Philadelphia. Okay, Philadelphia. You're, you're right. What was the name of the group? 
Um, I don't recall the group's name right Y'all now. Y'all probably remember there was a group in Philadelphia that got bombed by the city. And they took their remains and put them in colleges. Yeah. <laughs> and they just recently gave the remains back. They were using their uh, bones for, like, teaching people about seminars about and classes and stuff, professors. Yeah. And it's at like, universities. Why would you want to use, what, what's wrong with y'all? You can literally create fake ones. They have fake ones. You don't need real ones. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. <laughs> Ain't nothing like the. <laughs> I got a black one for you. <laughs> Guess that one, George. Are you trying to say you don't know the music? <laughs> he definitely know the. Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac one. <laughs> Folks. Oh, let me go there. Uh, full disdain and outrage and attention span only lasts about two weeks. Will is good. Now, I think this movie going to flop because people don't want to see a slave movie. Although there is this weird turn that happened to him. Like, if on, on his YouTube channel, he used to average millions of views and now he better than crack half a million. <laughs> he, like, he did lose a lot of support amongst whatever demographic that was. He used to respect elders and want to be hood. Who who is that? Want to Will be- is from the West, Will is from the uh, hood. He oh. from West Philadelphia. He from the hood. I don't um I don't do slave movies. Don't care who the actor That's is. That's what I said, Regina, in the first what's one. The I last, said, you, what's the last slave movie, quote unquote, you watched that probably was probably Django and I was about to say the same thing. That, that might the be last the last one. one that That's why I, I said didn't I don't want to see no more. Like I didn't hate that one. It was like they, I, I get it, they're mocking. It's a little bit of a parody, but not a parody. Um, I've been emancipated, so I don't need to see the movie. So <laughs> you got to use that line again, didn't you? <laughs> sure did, because people won't end the live then. So you never watched Glory with Denzel? He's talking about he talking nah. about Regina or us? Yeah, I guess anybody. He didn't put a word name on it. Have, yeah, have you watched, watched Glory? Glory? All right, did you like it? Nigga, say you didn't like the Denzel. We're talking Glory. about now. Nah, nah. We're not talking about then. <laughs> he ride and die for biscuits and gravy. What up, Kiefer? How you doing? Uh, Prince says that the um, Prince says that's demonic. That's why Prince ne- said never make a hologram of him. And his estate went after Justin Timberlake for attempting to do that. Yeah, well, we can't really. Uh, Prince can't really talk about demonic things now, can he? What did he do demonic? He was in a demonic industry. No, no. What he do demonic? That's being demonic by being in an industry that you know that is demonic. Birds of a feather, huh? You damn skippy. <laughs> Hell, him and Michael didn't even want to go to sleep because they were worried about. Who the who the demon was gonna get the most yeah, music to? Michael Jackson to. said he did. He, he, <laughs> whenever he thought of a song or something creative, he immediately did it because he was afraid the Most High was gonna give it to. As Prince. a matter of fact, we or God, he said. We 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 even know the deity that they called it. We did a video on it. I yeah. don't remember right now. It is a deity out there that gives music. Yeah, yeah. We we uh, we forget a lot that we say, but we <laughs> we do you it. Did. We remember. Yeah. We did it. You go find it. It's there. We got it in our catalog. Uh, what's going on, man? What up, Brandon? Uh, Denzel and Glory, <laughs> you, got, you got me there. And I did watch Roots in the '70s, but no more black trauma porn by choice. Exactly. It, once again, more well, in my case, I was a kid, and remember I asked the question a while ago: What do you think about parents, black parents, who decide not to teach, not allow their kids to watch Menace to Society, Boys in the Hood? Come on, are they teaching trauma to their kids? You ain't gonna disrespect my parents. What? You that ain't what we gonna do? What you mean disrespect? Just because they allowed us to see certain movies doesn't mean they were feeding us trauma. It was also educational based as well. I didn't say they were feeding us trauma. We watched Roots in school. In school. Why are they watching? I why are they letting Roots little in, black kids watch I Roots, watch in, Roots school? in school? I watched school. I watched it at home. I remember watching it at no, home. No, I didn't say we didn't watch it at home. We also watched it at school. I, I watched Third Alex grade. Bailey's. What's the name of it? With it Holly Berry? Who? Alex Bailey something. It's a series of Holly Berry, the biracial mulatto woman. You don't remember that series? I don't think I do. Regina wouldn't. <laughs> well, she don't do slave. George might know. Somebody might know in the comment section. <laughs> Ella, okay. Don't be like Travis, Regina. Glad you can clean. <laughs> Much appreciated. You can't clean. They used a the real Native American corpse in the first uh, Portuguese. I heard something about that. This is funny because that, that's what the movie was actually about. Travis disrespect elders and want to be hood. Oh, Travis. How oh, disrespect Travis elders? Dis- what Travis did, what, and want to be hood? Mm. Hey, George. <laughs> what the elders I disrespect? I don't know. Uh, he seen Django, but it was by accident as a Lincoln was full and still traumatized by Samuel Jackson's step. Steven, 
Yeah, uh, Samuel Jackson. That was one of the greatest worst characters ever. What's the line? Who that nigga on that nag? <laughs> <laughs> now the end when he said, "Lord, please let me kill this nigga." <laughs> I just like that nigga, boy. He played the worst of the worst. He said, "You know what?" He said, "If I'm gonna play a damn, uh, if I'm gonna play this role, I'm gonna play it the best that can be." I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it everything. And he did. He gave it all. I'm gonna be the opposite of what I what I want to happen. <clears throat> Allegedly. Allegedly. You don't, oh, hold on. Uh, Samuel Jackson. He went to a HBCU, and he's known for getting into it with the board because he said he wanted more black representation at the school. Good for Samuel L. Jackson. Got locked up for Hey, Samuel been riding for a long time. Yeah, he has in the industry. He's been riding for a very long time. <laughs> Once again, what are you trying to say? I'm not insinuating anything. You keep sending anything. these little shots at Get the elders. See, that's what George's talking about. Get your sending mind out together. Sending shots at the elders. What you saying? I'm not saying anything. What you saying? All right. <laughs>